Right, it was a bit of fun as an antidote to all those cooking programs on television. We're going to be stalking saucepans for the last part of this program at various ranges to show what we do shooting at longer range. And uh, as you can see, we've got a collection of quarry today, uh, colanders, uh, non-stick pans, and uh, we've just put a little, uh, little mark in them so they're easier to see at a distance. So we're going to wander out, put those at various ranges, and then uh, see what we can hit. And they should make a nice satisfying ding. We're also going to put out um, life-size row, and um, we're going to put some paint out as well because our view was what a beautiful picture of wild row could do with some improvement. So paint pots at range. Let's see if we can make a better picture. So that's shooting at range, and that's what we're going to do next. So uh, some mixed quarry plates, saucepans, colander or two, and um, indeed over there a lovely picture of a row, and we thought being arty types that we'd um, see if we could improve that with some paint pots at range as well. Uh, mixed ranges all over the place and down at the far end of the field uh, you can see there is a steel plate. So we're going to see what we can do at these ranges and as you can see from the camera they're spread out and we're going to get on them and uh, dial in and show you shooting at, uh, shooting at range. Now without data you can't shoot distance, you need to know your bullet drop and how to adjust your sights and you collect that in a table and you dial that in to correct for the distance and to do that you need to range and then correct. At that point, because you've tested it, you should have the confidence that it's going to go reasonably enough where you're aiming. At that point we then get into wind and we're not going to cover wind today and we haven't got any wind today which makes it a bit easier for me, but we'd also then judge the wind and dial the wind correction in again based on experience and data in our data table. So let's get into the quarry and start thinning these plates out and whacking out these saucepans. Now then, where are these pesky saucepans? Hiding behind corn stubble. Now David's asked us to do something along the lines of the paint pot challenge, so we're going to make a work of art. But just to make it really pleasant for me, he's asked me to shoot individual small sample paint pots one at a time in front of the target. Prone position, nice and steady, and as we said before, breathing, trigger, stop, weld and follow through. Controlling the rear of the rifle, right arms up, take pressure off diaphragm, and minimise disruption of the shot from breathing, pulse rate, etc. Get nice and steady and nice and settled. Not that the pressure's on or anything. Right, I'm going to put one in the zero target first so I can see where it's going. Straight through the middle of the yellow, so that's a good sign. If we're doing this rapidly, we wouldn't move our head or anything else. We would literally reload like this with minimal movement on the target. Right, top paint pot in theory. Top paint pot it is, although it took the bottom one with it slightly. Right, let's see how quickly we can work through these babies. Okay, top paint pot, next paint pot down. Next paint pot down. Next paint pot down. Picking them off one at a time. Okay, so his eyes are artwork anyway. So, as you can see, uh, we quickly checked at that range, and as you can see, uh, exactly on the money. Um, and then paint pots, the little pyramid here, you can see all of these pots down here, all got holes in the middle of them, as we uh, shot each one individually off that pyramid and created a lovely work of art here. Mr. Roebuck has um, definitely benefited from a paint job 
from all those cans. Um, so, Turner Prize maybe, not sure, but um, that's paint pots at extreme ranges.